Today, I will be grooming one of my favorite little doggies. Her name is Lola, and she can be a little bratty sometimes, but I just love this little dog. Um, she does usually have a little bit of matting, even though she's on a very uh, tight and regular schedule, but she does have long coat. She is a mix between a Maltese and a Shih Tzu, so she does get, um, she does have like a soft undercoat that gets matted very easily, especially in her action areas um, where she creates a lot of friction in, in the arms and um, on the sides from where her parents pet her. Uh, she gives me quite a bit of hard time for the toenails. She absolutely hates it, uh, but I don't use muzzles with her. I don't really use muzzles with any dogs. Uh, it's something that I feel like only upsets them more. I will use a muzzle in a very rare occasion whenever the dog is um, extremely aggressive for that but uh they it they have to show me that they're going to really draw some blood or they're going to really do some damage i'm just not the type of groomer that whips out a muzzle every time a dog gives me a little bit of hard time or you know tacking them down to the table to where they can't move at all that's just not the kind of uh, groomer i am I don't really want to fight a dog to where it upsets them and makes it impossible for me to groom them in the future. So when Lola gets here, we're going to um, go ahead and record the entire groom. And um, just it's for your viewing pleasure while you're sitting at home in quarantine and you kind of see how, uh, what a dog goes through during the whole grooming process with me. Here she is, guys, little Miss Lola. And yes, you can see Miss Lola is wearing, this is what I call a loop. It's not tied, but it's just so that if she tries to move to the edge of the table, it will get tied, letting her know that um, she's here for, for good, <laughs> for the time being. So we're gonna start with my slicker brush, and I'm gonna just go over real quickly and uh, look for some matting. You can see she's got lots of matting right here. That's matting. And this is a product I like to use. I love it. So I'm gonna spray it on there and rub it in and let it sit while I go over the rest of her. And here we go. I love this brush because it's got um, polished pins, so it's it's soft. Some of the cheaper brushes, they can cause uh, brush burn, but this one's real soft. You can tell by when I brush her, you don't hear a whole lot of friction, so I'm not gonna be ruining the coat. And then I'm gonna go back with my comb. Let's see if we find any mats, and there we are. See how I can't get through the comb? I'm gonna pull out my Les Pooch brush. It's also got uh, polished pens, but it's got a flexible head and uh, it has longer pens so we can get down to the matted areas. This part's gonna take a while. You're not gonna hear me talking much, but it takes a while to demat a coat without causing a lot of damage because a damaged coat will just mat up even quicker and faster. And I trust this girl's for a while. I'm gonna just take this off so I can get to those areas that I need to get to. I'm making sure that I'm not like digging too hard because I don't want to irritate the skin. I really just want to run the pins through the coat and not really touch the skin very much. The brush is going through. Repetition is key. Let's see how we're doing so far right here. 
we're able to do this side, but we still got a little bit of mass in here. strides my teeth and my comb are touching the skin so that I can make sure that I can get all the way through kill the hair back because as you can see she gets really matted in that area See, we're doing a lot of panting and that's because grooming is not Miss Lola's favorite thing. She's a sweet girl but this just isn't her, her cup of tea and for a lot of dogs it isn't. That's why it's very important to find a groomer that understands that, understands that grooming isn't fun for a lot of dogs and patience and understanding is required to make it as pleasant as we possibly can for something they just don't like to do. Lola's mom does does brush her and she tries real hard, but for someone who doesn't do this professionally, it's hard to find all the mats and get them completely out. I know, girl. A dog with hair this length should be brushed and combed every single day and see a professional groomer at the minimum of every four weeks. Every two weeks would be ideal for like come in for a bath and a brush out and then in two more weeks come in for a full groom. That's, that's ideal. That's how to you don't really like to do that then a shorter cut is necessary to prevent this kind of stress
mom always does a real good job on this top part. It's the easiest part on the dog uh, to brush because as you can see, Lola tries to turn around when I'm brushing her. And I'm sure she does that even worse to her mom. So, so her back's always pretty good. You giving my cousins? Lola trying to be sweet, giving me a kiss, but that's her way of saying, please stop, I don't like that. But we're being very gentle. I stand little up because she's got all this right here and she does tend to get a little bit mad on her side, which is her sensitive areas. I'm just kind of testing to see what's there and as you can see, she does not like it. Got a little mat right here that we need to get to. Oops, drop my brush. So she gets matted around this area a lot too. So I'm gonna lift the hair up and start at the bottom. Pulling down a little bit of hair each time. See a mat right here on the inside of her leg. Every time this dog comes in, I get this song in my head. Her name is Lola from Coco Bana. I don't know the words, I just make them up, but come on, Lola, we gotta get to the other side. So I got some more matting over here. Spray my product. Again, this is what I'm using.
girl. Okay, let's see your butt. It's also a sensitive area. Nobody likes that. Mom's done a real good job keeping her up. She knew she didn't want to have her shaved down, so. I know, it's sensitive area, I know. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay, let's go. All right, all right. Oh, okay, okay. So I always find a little bit of matting on Lola after the bath. This is just, you know, a pre-brush, but we'll find some more. So there's gonna be times I'm gonna to have to move around, from, move away from Lola, so I'm gonna put this back on. We're gonna shape the pads of her feet, do a sanitary area. Some hairy feet. Look at this. Hairy feet. She got a quick tongue, so we got to be careful. All right, y'all are about to see it. The nail trim. Girl is crazy. And she's loud. But I'm gonna show y'all what it's like to do a nail trim on this girl. And that you don't have to forcibly treat a dog badly because they're behaving badly. So here we go. Yes, she's gonna bite. Yes, her is. I'm not, I'm just, I haven't even started yet. I'm just looking for the toenail. <gasps> I know, I know, I know. I know, but it's for your safety because if we don't do it, it's gonna hurt you to walk on them. There, we got one, one foot down, one foot down. I haven't even done it yet, Miss Lola. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on. We got two more to go. 
So she squirms a lot, so I just like hold up her back end so I can see what I'm doing so I don't end up quicking her. Get past that tail so we can do these back ones. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. One more toe. One more toes. Or one more foot, I should say. And when we're all done with Lola's toenails, we do this big old, oh, I forgive you dance. Okay, all right, we do this big old, I forgive you, I forgive you, yes, I do, I forgive you, yes, I do, I do, yes, yes, you do forgive me, yes, you do forgive me, yes, you do, yes, you do, yes, you do, yes, you do, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 We forgive? We forgive? Hmm? All right. To the tub we go. So Miss Lola's going to get her bath to make sure that the temperature is right. And I like to use low pressure around the face. I don't want to get water in her nose. I hold the ear down so that water doesn't get in the ear. And I apply the face shampoo and I let it sit so that we can try and... I'm using blueberry uh, face stuff, try and make sure that we get the face nice and clean. Being real careful around eyes, even though it is tearless. Um, we still don't want to get it in the eyes. And I scrub real good. Get a good lather on it. And while her face soaks in that blueberry, I'm gonna wet her body down. Now, a lot of groomers do this part really fast. I like to take my time in the tub because I feel like even though the dog ate a bath, this is the part where we can try and make it enjoyable like we enjoy it. And get her ears. All around her neck. And because she has this long coat, I don't want to rub, you know because we don't want to retangle it or damage it any, any more than we have to. So I just rub it in, just like you would with a person with really long hair. Make sure we get all her little feet. Some people think like the faster you shampoo, because the faster you scrub, the cleaner you'll get, but that's just not true. It's the shampoo that's sitting on the coat that's actually working to get it clean. And I do do a quicker or first shampoo. Make sure to get her butt really good. And her private, her private spots. Poor girl probably feels violated. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. There we go. So that is the first shampoo. Just gonna rinse it. You don't have to rinse it completely off, but a good rinse. Because we're gonna do a second shampoo and that's when we're gonna really, really, really rinse. And the ears again and around the neck. So you see the second shampoo, we're getting a lot more lather because the first shampoo just kind of like loosened up the dirt and oils. Especially around the feet. Feet get really dirty, you know, because those are the ones that are always walking on the ground. 
Well, it slowly likes to go all the way to the back of the tub and make me bend over, make me kill my back. I always get a backache when I bathe her. I just keep moving her up front. Make sure to get under there to the belly and behind the arms. Try to add a little massage in there whenever I do the dogs when I bathe them. Try to massage their shoulders, their necks. Try to make it as enjoyable as possible for them. So that they don't hate it next time they come in or hate it as much. All right. Now the key to bathing a dog is to rinse them longer than you did bathe them. Let's rinse her face off. your chin girl. I know it looks like I'm squirting her in the eyes but she's closing her eyes. It's no different than whenever we throw water on her face in the shower. Dogs are pretty smart. They know when to close their eyes. I want to make sure not to get it in her nose. I'm going to pinch her ear closed so it doesn't get in her ear canal when I do the ear. So you want to get all that soap out around those ears. It's a hard place to reach for most pet parents. And I always rinse one part to make sure all the soap's out before I move to another area of the dog. Get under those armpits. Back really well. And since she scrunches up in a little ball, I like to make her stand up so that I can get underneath really good. This side, let's get her back side. Tail really good. Make sure to get those privates rinsed off. You don't want those itchy from left in soap. always use conditioner but on the spots where she tends to get matted um, every other groom I like to go ahead and condition like the long sides here her chest and her foot And another red.
It is not necessary to condition your dogs every single time you bathe them. In fact, most people don't rinse the conditioner out of the water the, all the way, and it can cause the hair to have residue left on it and make it mat up even quicker. So I'm not a huge fan of conditioner all the time. pretty well today. She usually sits, makes me push her up every time she sits constantly through the shampoo, but she's standing up real good for me today. She must know she's being filmed. <laughs> Clean the ears out, Mark. Clean her heads. Stuff in it too, actually, in case we got any hair in the ears to dry it out. And I clean the whole outside of the ear, gently cleaning inside without too much pressure. We don't want to cause injury to the ear. Just kind of swab it in there, just a regular cotton ball. Smells good. And then Miss Lola gets her teeth treatment. It's like some stuff we put on the gums. Make her breath smell good. And she takes a really long time to dry, so we like to wrap her in a towel and let her sit for a few minutes. And while she sits for a few minutes in her towel, we are going to groom her, her bubby, Mr. Landry. So we're back with Lola. She's been sitting all um, snuggled up in a towel for about 20 minutes to absorb most of the water so that it doesn't take quite so long to dry her. That also allows an, uh, the opportunity for her, um, for gravity to take effect and for her skin to actually absorb some of the moisture so she's not really dried out. Again, Lola's not a fan of the grooming and drying is one of the hard parts for her. So we're gonna use a stand dryer and brush her at the same time rather than a force dryer um, that would, it would force me to have to fight her really hard to get it done. So here we go.
So Lola's Bubba has been all groomed and ready to go while she waited. So now we're going to um, finish her up. So I'm gonna brush her all out and then we'll get started. Lola does get mess in her armpits, which is pretty painful to brush out, so we're just going to shave them out. And you won't be able to see them unless you're actually looking for them, so her mom's okay with that.
isn't actually my favorite haircut to do um, it's very um, challenging for me it's uh, completely hand scissored so getting it to look the same each and every time is difficult and it's very time consuming but the and I don't I'm not really a big fan of the really tight feed but this is you know my dog and I do what the, the um, pet owner wants 
So if you are interested in a type of haircut like this, you do need to come in every um, two to four weeks and you can expect to pay for the full haircut around 60 to 65 dollars um, of course if you want to go short the price is cheaper like if we were just to take her down to like a half an inch you're looking more at like 52 to 55 dollars um, um but this is miss lola i love her i do i love you lola, lola. we do y'all have a great day